Hello and welcome to the video of Division B Group 8 on the topic Bus Arbitration Techniques. On your screens right now are the names of the group members followed by the PRN numbers. So you may ask what exactly is a bus? A bus is a common pathway connecting two or more devices. There are two lines in bus networking, data and address line, data, address and complex command. The control line has signal request and acknowledgement. It indicates what type of information on data. The following is a pictorial representation of bus master and bus slave. In this, there are two devices. One is bus master and one is bus slave. In this arrangement, bus master initiates a request to bus slave through this control line. Then bus slave reads and analyzes the request and decides whether to send or receive data through the data line. In control line, request can be initiated from bus master to bus slave. In data line, data can be transferred either way. Hello everyone, I'll be explaining bus arbitration. Bus arbitration is the procedure by which the active bus master accesses the bus, relinquishes control of it and then transfers it to a different bus seeking processor unit. A bus master is a controller that can access the bus for a given instance. A conflict could occur if multiple DMA controllers, other controllers or processors attempt to access the common bus simultaneously. Yet only one is permitted to access. Bus master status can only be held by one processor or controller at once. By coordinating the actions of all devices seeking memory transfers, the bus arbitration method is used to resolve these disputes. Now, there are three types of bus arbitration techniques. Centralized bus arbitration, distributed bus arbitration, and priority based bus arbitration. Centralized bus arbitration. In centralized bus arbitration, when a component needs to access the bus, it sends a request to the arbiter, which decides to grant or deny the request based on a predefined set of rules. The arbiter then notifies the requesting component whether the request was granted or denied. One advantage of centralized arbitration is that it is simple to implement and can be efficient for small systems. It can become a bottleneck for larger systems as all requests must go through the arbiter which can slow down the system. Let's move on to the methods of centralized bus arbitration. There are three types in it. First one is daisy chaining method, second one is polling priority method and third one is fixed priority method. Moving on with the daisy chaining method. The daisy chaining method is a bus arbitration technique where devices are connected in a linear chain. The bus request signal is passed from one device to the next, allowing each device to take turns assessing the bus. It provides a simple and sequential approach to the bus arbitration, ensuring fair communication. However, latency can occur as device wait for the request signal to propagate through the chain. The advantages include it is scalable and provides simplicity. The user is free to add multiple devices to a predefined number of maximum devices wherever he wants along the chain. Some disadvantages are a device priority value is determined by the location of the master bus. Using this strategy results in propagation delay. The entire system will cease to function if one gadget malfunctions. Now I'll be explaining the rotating or polling priority method. The rotating or polling priority method is a bus arbitration technique where devices are assigned priorities and bus access is granted in a rotating or polling sequence. Devices are polled one by one and if a device with higher priority requests access, it is granted control of the bus. This method ensures fair and sequential access to the bus resources among devices. The advantages of this method are this approach is neutral in terms of processor and device preferences and the process is also straightforward. The disadvantages of this method are it is challenging to add bus masters since it increases the circuit's address line count and the system will continue to function even if one device malfunctions. Now I'll be explaining the fixed priority method. The fixed priority method is a bus arbitration technique where each device is assigned a fixed priority level. 
the device with the highest priority is granted immediate access to the bus when it requests it lower priority devices may be preempted if a higher priority device needs access this method ensures that critical devices have priority and enables efficient communication in computer systems the advantages of this method are that this technique produces a quick response the disadvantages are a significant number of control lines are needed which raises the cost of the hardware now i'll be explaining distributed bus arbitration in distributed bus arbitration a component sends a request to its arbiter to check the availability of the bus if the bus is free the arbiter grants access to the component if the bus is occupied the arbiter waits until it becomes available before granting access distributed arbitration offers scalability as each component has its own arbiter and can make independent decisions this decentralization allows for more efficient handling of bus access requests however implementing distributed arbitration can be complex and conflicts may arise if multiple components attempt to access the bus simultaneously careful coordination and synchronization mechanisms are necessary to prevent such conflicts and ensure smooth communication now i will be explaining priority based bus arbitration priority based bus arbitration involves assigning a priority level to each component that requires bus access when multiple components request bus access simultaneously the component with the highest priority is granted access first in case where components have equal priority additional arbitration techniques are employed to determine the access order one advantage of priority based arbitration is its flexibility as it can be tailored to suit the specific requirements of the system however implementing this method can be more complex and conflicts may arise if priorities are not clearly defined next are uses of bus arbitration in computer organization efficient use of system resources by regulating access to the bus bus arbitration ensures that each device has fair access to system resources preventing any single device from monopolizing the bus and causing system slowdowns or crashes minimizing data corruption bus arbitration helps prevent data corruption by ensuring that only one device has access to the bus at a time which minimizes the risk of multiple devices writing to the same location in memory simultaneously support for multiple devices bus arbitration enables multiple devices to share a common communication pathway which is essential for modern computer systems with multiple peripherals such as printers scanners and external storage devices real time support bus arbitration is essential in real time to ensure that high priority tasks are executed quickly and efficiently by prioritizing access to the bus bus arbitration can ensure that critical tasks are given the resources they need to execute in a timely manner improved system stability by preventing conflicts between devices bus arbitration helps to improve system stability and reliability this is especially important in mission critical systems where downtime or data corruption could have severe consequences